Oh, wow. You, babe, you look so hot right now. <laughs> what? There's nothing wrong with this. <laughs> Sorry, boys. I was AFK. Y'all still putting those videos? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I agree. Yes. I would do anything to be as good as you at your little shooter games. Well, I bet you'd be great, because obviously you've mastered being triggered. I'm sorry, but video games are a waste of time. I'm just hanging out with my friends virtually, okay? Video games, sports, just let me live. You're just jealous. Well, yeah, maybe I am jealous. I mean, if you communicate with me the way you do with your clan, which is a questionable term, we'd be the world's best couple. Well, join me then, okay? We could do it together. Why would I do that? Because this means a lot to me, okay? So if you just try it, I'll do something that means a lot to you. I'll talk to your mom for five minutes on the phone and make sure all the toilet seats are down for you. No, you'll need to buy me a new purse. Okay, yep, I think we just hit the bullseye. Oh, that would be your first bullseye. You suck at this game. By the way, the purse counts as your birthday gift. <laughs> if you're listening to this episode, it's a special one because this was pre-recorded. And if you're listening to this, it means Katie is in the hospital and I am there too with the baby. So That's right. So very exciting for those listening. For us recording right now, though, it's nah. just, you know, it's just a normal day. It's back in the day. We were just prepping for this day. So uh, not sure what's happening in the real world right now as you're listening. But for today, when we're recording this, uh, dude, do you see this? They're saying like there's now 12 cases in the United States. of coro co co It's Corona, like the beer. I know. It's kind of funny. The beer virus. Yeah. I, they do this to us. Oh, yeah. Ebola. It's going to take your... I'm not worried about it. Nothing ever actually like takes over like the articles would make you like believe. Like right. we're gonna be fine. We're not gonna even be talking about this in a week. I know it's always they're like it's always the China thing. Like what is it? Something darker? Like I'm not. Katie's a little nervous about it, but she just. Do you think it's gonna be anything? Um no. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, well, this is. Katie, this is one of her first times doing the podcast. Right. Recorded. Katie's She's, not used to yeah. podcasting. So I'm probably not going to talk too much. I'm just going to, you know, let you guys steal the show. Hmm. So anyway, uh, I guess I guess we'll Trump see. Trump or Biden. I know. Well, I feel like the main thing right now is there's Australian wildfires. Now, there's a news story. We're going to be talking about that for a long time. If, they, if the koalas don't survive, I will throw myself off a bridge. <laughs> I think that's fair. I think this year, I mean... This will be the year that we talk about wildfires more than anything. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Time for a change. That's right. Uh, we'll enjoy this episode. Let's roll music. Correct opinions. Correct opinions. Trey, what's your favorite word that rhymes with uh, breed or seed? <laughs> He's not saying it because he wants me to say it. It's indeed. It's Trey's favorite word. He loves how it rhymes. And Indeed is one of the sponsors of today's episodes. They are the bold, italicized, the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Doesn't that sound easy? I mean, what more could you want? Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills. You can do it all with Indeed, baby. Find top talent. You got a suite of Suite with a U, a suite of powerful hiring tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, virtual interviews. If you hate waiting, you got to use Indeed. U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates the moment they sponsor a job. That is pretty nice. That is pretty easy. Trey and I use Indeed, you know, for when we're hiring people. I'm thinking about using Indeed. I'd like to hire someone just to kind of like tickle my back. You know, I don't know if they, if I could find the right person with that without going to jail, but just anything you really want, Indeed could, it could find someone to fill that need for you. So um, there's also a feature called Instant Match. When a candidate you invite applies using Instant Match, they're three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search. So <laughs> rub that in my face, why don't you? Indeed knows that when you're doing everything for your company, you can't afford to overspend on hiring. Visit indeed.com slash Trey to start hiring now. Just go to indeed.com slash Trey. Indeed.com slash Trey. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Ding dong. That's the sound of someone at my door. Cha-ching. That's the sound of someone's dreams becoming a reality on Shopify. Did you catch the difference? <laughs> I sure did. Uh, yeah, you guys know Shopify. They've sponsored us before. They're great. They're awesome. We love Shopify. Uh, they are the e-commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. I don't care if you're trying to sell grass to a garden gnome, popsicles to your grandma, grandmas across the country. Shopify could do it. 
It's no problem. Shopify simplifies selling online and in-person so you could focus on successfully growing your business to all those grannies. Shopify covers every sales channel from an in-person POS, which means point of sale, okay, weirdos, uh, to an all-in-one e-commerce platform. Uh, they've got 24-7 help, extensive business course library. I mean, what else do you need? Shopify is there to support you and your success every step of the way. You know, I've got websites, Trey's got websites. We're trying to sell stuff, merch, tickets, whatever it is. Shopify is dominating e-commerce. I know there's plenty of people out there who do e-commerce. Maybe they're thinking about doing e-commerce. You need to be doing it with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period. That can't be right, but I'm, it looks like it is. $1 per month. Shopify.com slash correct opinions. All lowercase, please. Shopify.com slash correct opinions to take your business to the next level today. Go do it right now. Shopify.com slash correct opinions. What's up, everybody? If this is uh, sounding a little different or looking a little different, that is because I don't know how to read. That's right. But I'll tell you what I do know how to do. I know how to find a doctor when I need one. I will tell you that. And, you know, like anything, you want to find a, you want to find something good in your life. You want to check the reviews. And that's what I'm doing with Sock Doc, baby. Sock Doc. It is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient review, take your insurance, and are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Any star of choice, any star in the solar system, underneath it, ZotDoc treats it, baby. When you're not feeling your best, just trying to hold it together, finding great care should it take up all your energy. Isn't that right, Trey? He's not on his head. That's where ZotDoc comes in, using their free app that millions of users, users rely on. You can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. So go to ZocDoc.com slash correct and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. Once again, that's all underneath the sun or any star of choice. That's ZocDoc.com, Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash correct. ZocDoc.com slash correct. Woo! Ah, there's just a little razz. Katie's, she's very pregnant. Look at her in all her glory. Can do I, really do I look tired? Uh, no. Jake? No, no, she no. She's asking you. No. <laughs> <laughs> a little soft spoken today. We we were we have to tell Katie constantly, you know, make, make sure the mic's close. Is it tough being a soft spoken person? Yes. Let me just really <laughs> get in here. Is it hard? It's still not peaking the audio when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> is it hard? It's really hard to get my voice up. <laughs> it's exhausting, right? It is. It actually takes considerable effort to raise my voice for long periods of time. When I fell in love with Katie, I thought the thing I'd say most to her in our life was, I love you, but it's, um, what? <laughs> One more time. Sorry. Ah, and it's funny. It gets less, it's gotten, it gets slowly less kind over the years. I'll be honest. I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. One more time. Sorry. I'm sorry, sweetie, sweetie. I just can't hear you. I'm sorry. And now I just go, now I just go, ah, <laughs> ah, what? Can't hear you. <laughs> Poor thing. What's the thing you say most to me? Then versus now. Oh, man. I love you. Yeah. Used to say it all the time. Yep. Now, no. where's the love? Now I just say, that's annoying. He's, he's replacing, <laughs> that'll do. He's replacing me. Yeah. That's what I'm worried about. You, is, you, but your sauce... <laughs> In your pregnancy uh, ups and downs, you've the soft spokenness has disappeared from time to time. Yeah, there's just been last a little night, bit more like rage and stuff. Just last night, I like to mess <laughs> with Katie because she's so nice that she never, she just never gets. There'll be times where I'm actually trying to annoy her. I was like, "Is this not annoying?" She's like, "No." We were looking at the iPad, and she was kept pointing over the iPad, and so I'd kind of like hit her hand like <laughs> she was a child, and like typically she'd be like, "Hey," after like the fifth time, she's like, "Hey, can you stop?" And this time I hit it once and she just smacked my <laughs> hand back and goes, don't hit my hand like that. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> She's getting ready for motherhood, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think you've honestly helped me prepare a lot. I'm not going <laughs> to well, lie. thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we got in a, oh, this is funny too. I got in a little fender bender. And by this, this is, I, I promise I'll be a good driver. I, I haven't been pulled over in probably a decade. I haven't been in a wreck in a decade, but I've had it been in three fender benders, which are all me looking down a red light and not noticing I'm slowly moving at one mile an hour mm. and just mm, the car in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it three times now. Um, this one was a little, a little faster than one mile per hour. Probably five miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. It was a little, mm. 
So other times, typically, you both get out, you look, there's nothing wrong, and they're like, okay. And the person in front of me is like, what's this idiot doing? I'm kind of like, yeah, this is embarrassing. <laughs> this woman gets out, and uh, she's she's probably like a, in her mid-60s, and it just... And it goes green, and she's not paying attention. You can tell she's flustered. She gets out. It's green. So I'm kind of hollering, like, I'm sorry. I'll I'll follow you. And she gets out. She goes, my gosh. She's furious. And I'm like, oh, no. I'm about to get chewed out. You fended the wrong vendor. <laughs> and on top of that, Katie's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, wow, it's an accident. And she's like, it, it's the phone. I told you. I'm like, I can't get on my phone on a red light. <laughs> no, apparently not. Apparently not. So I follow her out, and there's this. by the time we get pulled over, the woman clearly had centered herself and was yeah. so nice. She's like, I hate this happened. And it was like a wow, 180. Yeah, yeah, it was. I was like, thank God. Cause I just like, my wife just yelled at me. This woman looks really mad. <laughs> I feel like just an idiot. So I'm just like, and of course, when, when someone yells at you like that, like you're an idiot, your response is kind of like, okay, I'm not, Hey, I'm not an hey, idiot. Hey, I just hey, messed hey. up. It's, but I'm like, yeah. I'm just got to swallow my pride to get out here and just apologize. Yes, I am an idiot. Yes, I am an idiot. But she was so nice. So shout out to Jane. Did you ex explain to her, look, I can either have my f my thumb on a phone or my foot on the brake, not both. Right. I mean, did she understand that? I, I did. I did my when I walked out. I don't know if this helped me or hurt me, but I, I led with just my verified Instagram account. <laughs> like, see, with this, I'm busy with this. It's work. It's wor it was working. <laughs> I know. She's so nice. So, she, of course, we exchange info. She writes her. She's, you know, Jane, she's she's a boomer. She's old school. Pen and paper vibes. Write it down. Writes it down. Then pregnancy brain Katie <laughs> the next day. No, um, yesterday. So it's been a couple of days. I was cleaning out my car and I see. We like to exchange cars because we, we don't believe in gender norms. Yeah, we, we, just, we rotate. Hey, which car yeah. do you want to drive today? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was cleaning out my car and I find this piece of paper that has. Our car. That says Jane Ooh. with a number. <laughs> and I was like, and I kind of like, I was kind of joking around. I sent it to Trey. I was like, girls handing out their number to you. And he was like, haha, ha, very funny. And I was like, no, what is this? <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> who's Jane? I, who's I, Jane? This I was is like, funny, huh? I know that it's not like a girl handing you her number, but like, who is Jane? And he was like, are you serious? I could not <laughs> recall at all. <laughs> that whole situation. You yelled at me. That is funny. It just. She's probably like, ugh, these fans are getting a little over over the top here. They got out the numbers. In your car somehow. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm like, it's like on. It looks like a like a wrapper of you like think a you pastry just it away? thing. I was like, someone gives them to him in a coffee shop, and he I brings mean, it into his car. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Pregnancy brain. It's been been you, a struggle. In your experience, Derek, did your wife uh, retain some? of the intelligence once the pregnancy was over <laughs> i'm still the one with the terrible memory so mm. um you have not a good sample <laughs> either what the man or the woman gets it yeah. apparently that's too bad derek was we were just uh family man derek he was giving me the lowdown you have the baby you have you obviously stay the night in the hospital and it's i think this would be a funny bit one day because my initial response to you katie was like well where just so there's like a bed in there for me, you know, mm -hmm. and all the women rolling their eyes. We, who gives a crap about the guy? Well, you know yeah. what? I know 99% of the efforts, well, probably 100% should be. <laughs> she's having the baby. She's been through a lot. Let's make sure she's very comfortable. But I'm still a human being. We can't get a cot in here. Couch it is. So I'm just talking about <laughs> And uh yeah, Derek was just like, just by the way, just prepare, man. You're gonna be uncomfortable. They don't give a crap about you. And <laughs> take a thin blanket. It's ice cold in there. I did. That's what it is. You know, I made I made a little hospital bag checklist for me, the baby, and for you. Ooh. And I included mm. you got pillow, blanket, jackets. I said jackets. It's very cold in there. Mm. So. Why is it so cold in there? Hospitals are just always cold. Oh, I, I it doesn't have anything to do the, with like. The baby I think the so world. It's so the dead bodies do don't decompose too <laughs> oh, quickly. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to get to the morgue quick. Yeah. Make sure you eat. I know that's a cliche, but I didn't eat the whole day uh, mm. with our second. And I'm, I almost passed out, but I couldn't complain, but I still right. wanted to complain. Right. <laughs> that's true. I can't complain. I you put did. snacks on the list. So good. Good. If there are none, that's your own fault. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> I'll tell you what we need to do is bring <laughs> extras of all this stuff. Start getting to know some of the other fathers in the labor word. Get a little yeah. secondary market going. Hey, a they thick bring blankets, some board games or thick blankets go for four hundred dollars. Throw a football in the hallway with some other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
some daily fantasy sports going yes. on. You could be the commissioner of the league going Run on. Run a little house betting in there. <laughs> yeah, set up a blackjack table. Guys, she's 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 10 centimeters. Over under four hours. <laughs> over under four hours. My money's over. <laughs> if I'm 10 centimeters. I don't. I, and it's yeah, going to take like, another you know, four hours. <laughs> we don't know. Help me. Wait, how, how many centimeters can you get? I don't know Ten. the metric system. And no, I oh, so I said what I said was accurate. That's the thing. Yeah, but ten four four more hours after being ten centimeters. Possible. No. It it is, but I really okay, hope that's not you. the case. I'm just glad I said something that was possible because I was really shooting from the hip there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's ten centimeters, but I keep hearing about centimeters. It's weird that we go metric system all of a sudden just for childbirth. It, it yeah. is. It right? is kind of funny. how come? Yeah. Doctor, I need it in the metric system. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone get me a liter of water? <laughs> oh, thirsty. Oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Why? That's so weird. What is he? Is he how long? How long is he? Half a yard. <laughs> and That's not good yards. enough. They do give the baby in inches. <sighs> what? We gotta decide <laughs> on something. Yeah, it's a it's a good point. When I was shooting with, uh, I was down in Orlando with Tacoma doing some stuff. They had me kind of be like a commentator for this like video on their channel, and it was two guys from the UK versus two guys from. America. And so I'm just hammering the UK versus England jokes the whole time, you know, Great. Harry versus Megan, stuff like that. Um, but one of the things I was giving them a hard time, I was like, I had a range fighter. I was like, all right, we're 180 yards for the for the Brits. I don't know what that is in meters. And they're kind of making fun of me. They're like, uh, we use we use yards too, bruv, or whatever. And I was like, don't you guys do the metric system? And they were like, for some stuff. And I was like, why? And they're like, oh. I don't know. They're like, yeah, we use... Um, uh, we use yards. We use uh, now. I can't remember it all, but for some reason, British people out there, why are you going? Why are you doing half and half? I thought America was like the only people doing I like, didn't the imperial system. Yeah, wasn't well, a foot come from like an England royalty? It was like the size of his foot. I'm really? Pretty, I'm pretty sure that's true. Wow. wow, that's fun fact. Yes, sir. Ten centimeters and, and the foot. Teaching thing. the trivia boy over here. Look at me. Yeah, that's impressive. Thank you very much. Uh, I think, yeah, the rest of the world is metric and yeah. Hope you don't get to a foot. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> While we're still on the, uh, <sighs> the, the, the baby topic, I, uh, I've been having some fun with chat GPT, the AI generator recently. And so just while we sat down here, I, I said, write a poem about having a baby, but wanting to play video games. Thank you. Figured that, that could that's be fun. exactly our life stage right now. <laughs> I haven't read this. I haven't seen this, but this is what ChatGPT said. A baby cries, a controller calls. Oh, <laughs> that is. Oh, well, dude, we're out of a job in six months. <laughs> That's a great start. <laughs> a baby cries, a controller calls. It's a great start. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Two sides of life, equal forces draw. Slant rhyme, slant rhyme, but you know, pretty good. One brings joy, one brings escape. Yet both have equal right to shape. This makes total sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> a new life grows, a world to raise, but still within, a gamer craves. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is horrible. horrible. This, this is, is funnier than me. This is funnier than me. <laughs> I can't believe how good this is. I seriously did not read over any of this. To enter realms where heroes reign and conquer la lands with every game. I just get me fired up. The baby coos, the controller waits. Both hold my heart, it's not a debate. But one must win, the time is short, for baby's needs will always sort. The gaming world I must leave behind. Oh, it's making a decision for you. For the baby's cries, I must be kind. But when the day is done and night is near, the controller calls and I will hear. That's fire, dude. Oh, Bars. That was the whole thing? <laughs> no, there's still more. How that is so much good. more does it go? Well, please. <laughs> Two more stanzas. I mean, they could have ended right there. And so I'll play until the dawn. The baby sleeps and I am on. A mom and gamer. Oh, this is from Katie's perspective who wants to play video games. Oh, yes. okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. A mom and gamer, both combined, bringing balance to life's design. <sighs> For babies grow and games do too. And so I'll be a mom who's true to both her child and her love to play, finding balance each and every day. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> Chat GPT is nuts. And it's free. That's crazy. That was just it, the it first just thing I typed in. put that out in a nanosecond. <laughs> yeah, just boom. There's an amazing poem for you. So you send that to me, please? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to send it to my 
my fellow gaming dads, <laughs> that's just hilarious. That's terrifying. It's gotten better. Katie's dad did a funny little sh- dad shtick at Christmas. He's like, I want. I wrote a Christmas poem for the family. And you're like, okay, that's kind of sweet. And he read it. And you're like, okay. And he's like, Chat GPT wrote that. Really? <laughs> and it, it's improved. That is I think it's yeah, very good. Yeah, I agree. I can't believe that's still free. Oh, that's so scary. It makes me so, so scared. Do a quick, uh, say, write a stand-up bit about um, childbirth. Is that something I can do? Okay, it's thinking. Oh, it needs a little extra time. All right. It's, uh, wow, I'm seeing it like type as I go. So, have you ever heard about the miracle of childbirth? It's amazing in the sense that it's a true test of a woman's strength and willpower. But at the same time, it's also a test of a man's courage and resolve. Because let's face it, when your partner goes into labor, it's your job to hold it together and be the rock. What do you do when she's squeezing her hands so tight you think your fingers might fall off? Do you scream? Do you cry? Do you pass out? No, you just smile and nod and say things like, you got this, babe, I'm right here. And then after it feels like an eternity, the baby finally arrives and it's this little squishy, beautiful thing that you can't believe you helped create. And your partner looks at you with tears in her eyes and says, we did it. And you realize that birth is not just a physical experience. It's mental and emotional one, too. This is not that funny. Okay. <laughs> yeah. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I was waiting for some punchline that was going to make me uh, delete all my social media. <laughs> yeah, that was d- not. No punchline anywhere? No. no okay. No. Oh, wow. He hasn't figured that out yet. I'll try again. I'll try again. Thank God. I thought it was, it was kind of, it was kind of bringing me in with a it lot was like, of okay, I was like, where's it, where's it headed? What if we say write? Oh, that's so scary. A, write a comedy video or write a comedy. Yeah. Write a, write a joke about childbirth. Okay. Last try chat GPT. You're not taking our jobs. This is going to be like a laffy taffy joke or something. Yeah. All right. It's thinking. It's thinking. Okay, so comedy, it's not quite. Oh, yeah. The poem's easy. Oh, yeah. The what do comedy. you think about that, little AI? So funny. Not so funny after all. Here we go. Yeah, this is like laffy taffy. Why did the baby come out crying? Because it was ready to say goodbye to nine months of room service. <laughs> <laughs> they stole that joke. It's a joke stealer. That's uh, pretty okay. Dumb. Speaking of. Uh, all the UK, I don't want to let this go because we're pre-recording, so it's tough to see all the give the shout out to all the recties. But I did have one video from the fan I want to talk about. Um, okay, it's a callback to we were saying we need a UK liaison, we need an Australia oh, yeah. liaison. So someone, we have another UK potential. Do we it. need a Gen Z liaison? We have another potential UK <clears throat> listener. Hello, Derek, Katie, Jake, and Trey. My name First. is Sydney, and this is Oliver. And we're videoing in to first say thank you just for all of your content. Um, Really enjoy the podcast, especially. Uh, I think that's because I am 100% your target demographic as a basic white girl, um, new mom, just turned 30, sheltered Christian upbringing in the suburbs, so can really relate to um, all of your content and feel like we're kind of going through life at the same, uh, same pace. And secondly, I'd like to put my name in the ring for London Liaison, or United Kingdom Liaison. I have lived in London, UK for about five years, and I don't have an accent like the last gentleman who submitted um, his name. That's that's fun, but I can't really compete. Um, But I feel like I have a good understanding of the difference in cultures um, between the US and the UK. Um, Grew up in Oregon, uh, lived in Seattle for a while as well. Um, And they do some strange stuff here, so I'd love to um, be of assistance if you need. Uh, thank you for that submission. Hope the motherhood's going well. Well, it's, I think she might be disqualified because, um, you know, she's always has the UK thing. She's lived there, but being from Seattle is just kind of gross. <laughs> and being sheltered in the suburbs, is she even the best American ambassador? Can she even fully contrast right. and compare the two? She might know the UK, but she doesn't know America. I think... It's honestly could be possible. She grew up in a sheltered suburbs outside of Portland. It sounds like mm-hmm. she she could just live in downtown Portland and be convinced it's London. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that could be happening. She's like, I've lived here all my life. I don't have the accent, but uh, <laughs> I love tea. Yeah, well, send in again when your baby's saying words. He, but if he's not going, mum, then I don't buy it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she asked if, if we needed any assistance. The assistance I need is you to speak in a British accent mm-hmm. if you're going to be our ambassador. That's kind of the whole point. Of it. <laughs> no one would go to London ever if you show up there and they're like, you want some fish and chips? Howdy. You want crumpets or what? It's the whole 
allure. Do do people do foreigners like American accents? Or is it not very sexy? Is it kind of like That's a good question. I think they like saying candy. I think we say candy funny. Candy. Oh really? I think they like a candy? southern accent. Yeah, that's probably funny. Really? Yeah. Oh, just funny. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's sexy or cute or anything. I like hearing foreign people give their American accent. That's yeah, always fun. That's fun. Yeah. Can you do a good London accent? You tell me, bruv. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Katie? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Katie? Mm, no. Yeah, that was bad. Oh, yeah, I kind of <laughs> heard it. Yeah, no, I heard, I heard it. No, no. That's Australian, right? No. Yeah, I believe so. Maybe. No. <laughs> no. I wish I could do accents better. It'd be fun. I should work on them, you know. <clears throat> Hello, mate. <laughs> yeah, you need if to we got any Australian, uh, <laughs> if we got any Australian listeners, Sounds feel free to, to send in your liaison. <laughs> Must be eighteen or older, preferably a bit older, maybe thirty. <laughs> I lost. I went a little Irish there. Yeah. It was going okay. Yeah, I thought that was great. Thanks. There's we need something a, there. We need to practice for our, the Australia. Yeah, trip. I want to do. Mm-hmm. If we do a show in Australia, I want to do the whole thing in an accent. Oh wow! I think they would appreciate. I that. think they would like it. <laughs> I think. I don't think they'd be offended by that. I think they wouldn't be annoyed or anything. Because yeah. that's why I feel like when I go to an Ed Sheeran concert and he kind of sings American, I'm like, oh, he's like catering to me, like Harry right. Styles, Ed Sheeran. If they're in Ireland, in Britain, they just sing British. But when they come here, mm-hmm. they sing my way, which mm-hmm. I like. Absolutely. So I think the Australians would appreciate that. Appreciate. <laughs> uh, you know what I watched recently that I'd like to talk about? I, I thought this was very interesting. I watched the documentary about Bernie Madoff. You seen this on Netflix? Yeah, it looks like it's pronounced Madoff, but it's not. No. Got it. Madoff. <laughs> Madoff. Take your, take your whole retirement. Madoff. <laughs> he uh, was a Jewish guy. Just painting a picture. I'm not saying Jewish people do this. Okay. But he, um, no, it was, that was an interesting detail because he, a lot of the people he swindled were Jewish because like, this is, this is a fellow Jew. This guy's got me. Oh. Uh, but was he a, a mole? Was he not actually Jewish and he just wanted to swindle them? I believe he actually was. Oh, okay. He was half Jewish, I think they said. He just didn't discriminate. He's like, I'll swindle anybody. I don't uh, care. He definitely did a lot. So, because you always hear about it and I didn't fully, under, it was just a classic Ponzi scheme. Gotcha. Yeah, give everyone classic for the for those other people out there who maybe don't know what this is. Explain it to them really simply. Katie, explain what Ponzi scheme is, please. My throat's really dry. All of a sudden, I think you got it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, pregnancy problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can argue that. Pregnancy throat. Pregnancy throat. Pregnancy throat. It was kind of like a reverse Ponzi. Well, yeah, I guess a Ponzi is just a classic. Like, hey, you give me your money, and you're like, okay, and then. I give you back more money than you gave me. Mm-hmm. But in order to do that, I got someone else give me money. You just repeat that. That sounds awesome. Yeah. And so we eventually it obviously stops working. So you just imagine it's kind of like a elevated Ponzi scheme where he, he was like saying he was running an investment firm and he, it's just crazy. He did this for like 40 years. The only reason it came crashing down is because of the 08 like the catastrophe. Oh, of the market so like everyone wanted to pull their money out and he couldn't provide he didn't it. actually have any money yeah i see well it's like he had a certain amount and it was so basically he's pooling all this money from people and then they're giving fake reports so let's say you know i give this guy 100 grand and like i give it to him because somehow some way he's making more twice as much as everyone else even the market's down i'm getting returns mad off and he's sending me so he's sending me every year that my 100 grand is now worth 500 grand Keep hold on to it. Hold yeah, on to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it's just the hundred grand, and so it's like he's pulled together how many like hundreds of millions. But in the 08 crash, so many people were like, "We need it. We need it." It's like what he had couldn't yeah, um, satisfy. And there's a lot more details to it, but uh, it's crazy because so many people they had what they thought was how you know that so many stories that people said, I, which it's kind. of, I don't know. It's easy to be like, well, that person was an idiot because I don't know if you should put 100% of your money with one single investment firm, Mm -hmm. which maybe it's just a learning lesson to don't not do that. But people are like, yeah, I had a million bucks, my life savings. This guy was killing it. So I just gave him a million bucks. And then no way it comes. And they're like, that is gone. Wow. Yeah. So So this guy, a lot of people, he said he was doing investing, but he's just other people are just giving him money and he's just like redistributing it to people to make everyone happy. Yeah. You think, 
because so many people didn't ask for that money out. They're like, yeah, hold on to it because you're giving me fake statements every year saying gotcha. it's gone up by 15%. So you just lie to people. Like, no, 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 it's going up. Mm-hmm. And yeah, then whenever how- someone would be like, you know, actually, I want that million out. He'd be like, okay, I can. I have that. So here you go. Wow. Yeah, how can you operate that and not think you're going to But But then he was also operating a very legal, legitimate uh, he- like hedge fund, too. Okay. So he was like talented in this, but... He also had this just a weird illegal thing going on for some reason. That's kind of interesting. I want to watch that. That's and the so SC, sad. And the all SEC, those people. They swindled the SEC multiple times. They mm-hmm. got past this person or that person. And weird. I don't know if I've talked about this on the podcast before, but I remember way back in the day, probably like early college, late high school, I wanted to start something and I wanted to call it just like Ponzi scheme, the pyramid or something. <laughs> like I wanted to be so like upfront, like this is set up like a pyramid. It's not necessarily a scheme, but like everyone is, it's fully transparent. Everyone knows exactly what's happening where it'd be like, yeah, just the higher up you are in the pyramid, the more money you can make, but there's no products. There's no anything. It's just like give money, like give a hundred bucks a month to this like fund. And like just the more, the higher up you are, the more money that you get, you know, to be like, obviously I started it. I get a ton, but then the three people. that's how Jake founded Rodana Field. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) He's but I want to do it with no products. Like there's literally, we're nothing, we're trying to sell or trying to fake sell. It's just like, just a right. subscription to nothing. Yeah, that would I'd put you in jail for sure. Would it? I don't <laughs> yeah, know. If you were just like, this is a Ponzi scheme. Yeah, yeah. Would you yeah. like to sign up for it? And Keep, be some like, people yeah, if you're, still would. If you're good yeah. at it, I'll do it. Yeah. That's, yeah. You're I'm onto like, something. I'm Let's gonna do it. I'm going to crush some numbers. Rectis, Venmo Jake, 100 bucks. And we'll send you back 105 bucks. Yeah. Maybe. You'll get... Yeah, how would it work? Like, But 10% of you will be screwed completely. That's a fun... It's just like a fun gambling game. It, it Yeah. Ten, I'll send us 100 bucks. We'll send you... <laughs> uh, I'm This math probably isn't accurate. We'll send half of you 110 bucks, and half of you will get nothing. Does that sound like a fun game? <laughs> I think I'd like to structure it <laughs> where like... Yeah, you give me 100 bucks, 10 bucks, some even number, where like... Yeah, let's say it's 100 a month. As long as you have signed up three people you will get your money back because you're getting a, a percentage of that so it's like you get like you know yeah, yeah 40 yeah. bucks for each person you sign up so all you need is three to get your money back then it just goes down from there it's all about just getting people to Genius. sign up underneath your name the craziest part of the end of the documentary because this was you know i was put out if, like recently so obviously this, it was this scene was probably shot a year or two ago they're like uh there will be another Bernie Madoff. Like there'll, mm. nice. there will be another. And it's yeah. like, FTX. there just was one when the crypto bull run, yeah. FTX, billions gone. That part was crazy. Like, wow, it really, and in 10 years, there's going to be some chat GPT or some weird things, AI, you know, invest in this or that. And some person's going to, so stay woke, everyone. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. Oh, I don't know. That, really? Bitcoin, that Bitcoin I have is going <laughs> to end up good. Mm-hmm. I'll I think. ask Chat GPT. How's how's block how's uh BlockFi doing? BlockFi still locked down. Still locked down. Yeah, still don't have not anything. Not getting that money. Cool. Cannot, cannot <laughs> retrieve it. <laughs> if any of you guys out there are like me, uh, when something happens to you, like health wise, I don't go straight to a doctor. Sometimes I don't even go straight to the internet. I go to like my friends in a group chat and say, "Hey, is this supposed to be pinkish?" You know, and I feel like I never get the answers I want because it is a group of dudes who barely graduated high school who are responding to me. But it doesn't have to be that way with ZocDoc. I'm not just telling you a random story about a rash I've developed in a weird spot. No, this is a a ZocDoc uh, spot here. And uh, we've talked about them before. ZocDoc is great. They're sponsoring us again. Um, They're the only... How about that? Free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed Take your insurance and are available when you need them to treat almost every condition under the sun. That is so nice. No more Dr. Roulette or scouring the internet for questionable reviews. With ZocDoc, you have a trusted guide to connect you with your favorite doctor you haven't met yet. Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who is patient-reviewed and fits their needs and schedule just right. Boy, doesn't that sound nice? Huh? Katie? Doctor? Nothing from Katie. She's had a kid, so she's not talking a ton right now. Um... Go to ZocDoc.com slash correct and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash correct. ZocDoc.com slash Z- Z- uh, <laughs> ZocDoc dot 
com slash correct. Whew, struggling by myself. Hey, buckaroos. Do you know in the last, I don't know why I just called you all buckaroos there. I've just, you know, they leave me on my own where the walls are blue and I don't know what happens to me. Um, but I was going to say in the last 60 seconds that I've been chatting, 16 hires were made on Indeed. 16. When you sponsor an Indeed post in the US, you're three times more likely to get a hire, according to Indeed data. Can you trust it? I would. The right candidate is doing everything they can to find you. And if you use Indeed, you can be sure you're doing everything you can to find them too. Do you need more stats? I'll throw them at you. 81% of US online job seekers search for jobs on Indeed each month, according to Comscore. Basically, join the movement. Join the people of the world. Everyone's hiring and finding people on Indeed. If you've got a business out there, if you need to hire someone, use Indeed. They've got a feature called Instant Match. With Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates whose resume to, resumes on Indeed match your job description. And you can invite them to apply right away. That's just bang, bang. It's so quick. Why would you not want to do this? Not at me. With it Indeed. <laughs> when you're doing everything for your company, you can't afford to overspend on hiring. Now with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that meet your criteria. Visit indeed.com slash Trey to start hiring now. That's indeed.com slash Trey. So I'll say it again. Indeed.com slash Trey. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? Of course you do. You need Indeed. Ding. Oh, there it is again. That was the sound of a slightly higher pitched, but still successful sale coming through uh, the e-commerce business of your ears. That's right. Shopify has got you guys covered. It's making millions of people's dreams become a reality every single day. This is I'm not making this up. I literally took a a like an e-course last week on how to sell like more t-shirts, more merchandise. And we're asking them, like, what do you use? He said, Shopify. We said, what about this? What about this? And he said, honestly, Shopify has so many tools. Like they're like dominating the space of e-commerce. And I said, hey, that's great. Because I'm going to talk about Shopify on the podcast next week. He really did say that. And uh, this is a guy crushing it, selling things online. So if you're in any way dealing with e-commerce, even in-person commerce, use Shopify they're awesome. We love Shopify. Uh, they are the e-commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. I don't care if you're trying to sell grass to a garden gnome, popsicles to your grandma, grandmas across the country. Shopify could do it. It's no problem. Shopify simplifies selling online and in person so you could focus on successfully growing your business to all those grannies. Shopify covers every sales channel from an in-person POS, which means point of sale, Okay, weirdos, uh, to an all-in-one e-commerce platform. Uh, they've got 24-7 help, extensive business course library. I mean, what else do you need? Shopify is there to support you and your success every step of the way. You know, I've got websites. Trey's got websites. We're trying to sell stuff, merch, tickets, whatever it is. How about that? It's your turn to get serious about selling and try Shopify today. This is Possibility, powered by Shopify. How do you, how do you like that? A little uh, alliteration possibility powered by Shopify. Do it, please, patrons of the podcast. Appreciate it. The, the Shopify is packed with industry-leading tools to reignite or to ready to ignite your growth and your business. So like I said, $1 per month trial deal. That's at shopify.com slash correct opinions, all lowercase. Shopify.com slash correct opinions to take your business to the next level today. $1 per month trial period. It's crazy. Shopify.com slash correct opinions. Well, um, Speaking of more bad guys, this clip is like equally horrifying as it is hilarious. It's uh, Derek is that TikTok. This was going around where this guy, this guy's wife disappears, and he's of course. So they first go to him. Wife disappears. They got to talk to the husband. Got it. And they unearth his Google searches, and it's like some. It's something out of like a comedy sketch. What this? Mm. Just play it through and mm. listen to this. Chat it's GBT like sketch. so what was sad. Five a.m. on January first, he searched. How long before a body starts to smell? At 4.58 a.m., how to stop a body from decomposing. At 5.20 a.m., he searched how to embalm a body. At 5.47 a.m., 10 ways to dispose. 10 dispose ways is a weird thing to do. Really it's like a BuzzFeed to. article? Yeah. At 6.25 a.m. on the 1st, how long for someone to be missing to inherit? Oh, my gosh. At 6.34 a.m. on the 1st, can you throw away body parts? At 9.29 a.m. Can you throw away body parts? Do? At three At hours 9 later. At 9.34 a.m. on first, how long does DNA last? At 9.59 a.m., 
can identification be made on partial remains. At 11.34 a.m., dismemberment and the best ways to dispose of a body. Oh my gosh. At 11.44, how to clean blood from wooden floor. At 11.56 on the first, luminol to detect blood. At 1.08, what happens when you put body parts in ammonia? At 1.21 p.m., is it better to throw crime scene clothes away or wash them? Oh my gosh. At 2.55 a.m. I mean, January it just 3rd. goes for that. For 12 hours, he's Googling these things. That's what That's I took away so from it. Strange. If I'm curious about something, I get it out in 10 minutes. Why did he stretch that out over... I mean, it's just where if they kept going, there's like at at 3:26 p.m. You googled um, "man kills wife" memes. Funny. <laughs> uh, at 5 p.m. He googled how to order dinner without wife home. <laughs> at 6 p.m. He googled local grocery store where to find milk. My wife's gone forever. His, his searches ten ways to dispose of what they were so weird. There's some out of like. Someone was writing it to try to be funny. It was what it sounded like. It does seem like I mean, a sketch. He per, for sure killed his wife, so he was clearly not in a great state of mind. Or uh, yeah, a normal I guess. state of well, mind. Just Googling, like, can you throw away body parts? Does he think, like, <laughs> the local waste management? Like, FAQs. We do not accept arms and limbs. We do not do uh, body dismemberment pickup, but you can bring them to the landfill, <laughs> and we will accept them. It's just crazy things. How to clean wood floor. That's a guy who, the wife was doing everything in that house. <laughs> just throw that, just a subtle, like, a lot of it was so morbid how to, like, get, get away with murder. And one was like, also, how do I do a household chore? <laughs> it was, but it was specifically blood. But, no, if I, I've bled on the floor before, right? Had a mm-hmm. cut, bleed. I didn't Google, how do I clean it? Get sanitation. <laughs> clean it up. That's really dark and he also just looks like he kills people yeah. it's crazy how that happens unfortunately he does it doesn't look good for the the um scruffy greasy haired men out there that's a bad look for you yeah well, people the head are that looks assuming... like a block yeah mm-hmm. they look like a minecraft character Oof. that was uh it's just a wild again that's very sad i'm not trying to make light of it but it's like something out of a yeah. Some things are so crazy. It's like someone had to make it up. This guy's like a boomer who doesn't know how technology worked. That like, totally. hey, hey, dude, we can see your Google searches. You imbecile! Like what a. I still can't get over the timing. Just like he would go three hours between searches. Maybe they're just you know cherry picking the ones that make the most sense. But still, it's just like to Google like how to dispose of a dead body and just sitting with those results for three hours and then be like. All right, three hours has gone by. It's time for my next search. Yeah, not to make this whole episode about horrible husbands, but did you? This just came out, uh, and then we can move on to lighter stuff. Uh, uh, I'm not made off. So what's coming right? What's the other M word? Rachel Maddow. Maddow. No M word. Uh, bad guy. His whole family's dead. The one from Colorado. No, they're they're prominent like lawyers on the East Coast. Very the, fa- the, like really Murdoch, rich- Murdoch, Murdoch. You haven't heard of this? The Murdoch family. It's like a whole weird true crime thing where like he was a prominent lawyer. His it's like a Kennedy family weird thing. Like people gotcha. just keep dying. And it's like how are ah. these people dying? There's like his son died. So his wife died. He oh, yeah. he was like I think he hired a hitman to kill him, but he survived the gunshot. And it's all kind of this weird mystery. But new evidence came up from the deceased son's. Snapchat. So again, like Snapchats, wow. they don't disappear. They the government can have those. And it like put him, it was like an hour before the guy died. It was like a Snapchat of him like snapping his dad, hanging out with his dad, like at the scene. Ooh. And this outfit he has on was different than the outfit he had on when the police arrived. Presumably. Oh. Like he's like, let me change out of this. So Snapchat. Again, it's like, hey, Snapchat, Google. These those don't just disappear into the night. Wow. <sighs> anyway, what do you know? What do you? What's going on in the PGA with joggers? <laughs> yeah, I wrote that down. Um, so, as you guys know, we're recording this in February of 2020. But um, no, this <laughs> did happen just a uh, you know a few weeks ago, probably. But so I guess uh, the PGA Tour, it's very um, very formal. You always have to wear pants. They've never been allowed to wear shorts. You know, kind of a silly thing, but it's just it's the rules. I guess a guy recently decided to um, wear some joggers. Which I don't know. I would have assumed maybe since joggers have become popular the last few years, people have worn jo- joggers before. Maybe not. Maybe this is the first time anyone's ever worn joggers because the internet 
at least the golf world was going crazy just being like what is this guy wearing it to me they look great those look like you know, so like it, the only difference is it's just like elastic at the bottom yeah just like a tapered yeah like bottom to it and um if you scroll down a little bit derek you could see like this is not a fake tweet this is truly uh or click on the um the link in the document like the article there's a phil mickelson tweet and oh phil, phil mickelson's judging people <laughs> yeah oh my <laughs> gosh there it is the the tour doesn't allow sh phil mickelson all-time golfer who now plays for live be getting paid by the saudis because he's gambled away 400 million dollars <laughs> Phil Mickelson, the tour doesn't allow shorts, but does allow this week's leader to wear joggers with ankle socks, showing four inches of ankle? Saudis would never allow that <laughs> with women. <laughs> he didn't say that. Showing four inches of ankle? I'm no fashion guy, never will be, but there's some things I'll never understand. Oh, this guy. This guy. In, <laughs> Isn't that crazy? What a funny. I really, really hope when I'm 60, I don't say stuff like that. <laughs> Four inches of ankle. Four like, inches he's of being ankle. serious. This guy's I'll never get this. I'll never understand. It's like he's a professional athlete complaining about seeing another man's ankle. Like, Shorts is one thing, but just a little bit of ankle. What a tease. <laughs> or, I just you know. don't get it. <laughs> well, yeah. did he want, I guess he wanted him to wear crew socks with the joggers. Yeah, maybe it was a sock thing. Yeah, mm. it wasn't a pant thing. It was a sock thing. Big yeah. sock. Hi. Mm. Tube socks or slacks. Nothing in between. Nothing yeah. in between. He's like, yeah, four inches of ankle. This guy got to play naked next. Jeez. <laughs> I'll never forget gross. when uh, I'll never forget playing the fancy country club in Dallas. And I had like a a, sh a non colored shirt on. I've said, I think I said this on the pond. And he did the as a man, a group of men. There's nothing more dis disrespectful than to talk to a man through another man. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. instance, I go, hey, Derek, Derek, explain to me what this guy to my rights got on him. <laughs> explain that to me. The best. They did that to you? How 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 small do you feel? <laughs> Even I was faking it. I was like, Derek, uh, this guy right here, tell me what's up with the haircut. Could you tell me? And you'd be like, Are you talking? I'm right here. The guy did that. It was three of us. Super. I was with Joe, our friend, and sport clubs. And the guy working there goes, uh, This guy now got a collar on. And I was looking at him like, You're you talking to me or? I speak English actually. Yeah. You want to just take it up with me directly? <laughs> yeah, not a foreign exchange student. I'm not sure what vibe I'm putting off. And yeah, just uh, the guy was just furious. I I didn't have on like a. It's not like I just looked like I came from painting a house or anything. It was. It wasn't like a bodybuilder's tank top. Yeah, it was a fine shirt. It had buttons, it, right? It just was like no, a, no. Oh. So again, that's what's funny too. We joked about it once. Like Tiger Woods wore a mock neck, yeah. which is just like a t-shirt with like an extra inch of material right here. Yeah. So that's cool. Because Tiger, did Tiger it. did it. Yeah. So that's, why, that's why every time I go golf, I crash my car into a ditch. Because <laughs> he made it. Is that why you hit that lady? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, what's wrong with you? You're like, I like golf. I'm a Tiger Woods fan. I'm on my way to the course. Charlie Woods is going to be as good as his dad. <laughs> that uh, is nice of you to pay homage that way. Homage. Homage. Oh, man. I asked ChatGPT, when is the next major uh, economic downturn when we were talking about that? Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, it said, uh, I'm an AI language model. I can't predict uh, future events. So mm -hmm. that makes sense. But I did try. At least it's yeah. honest. Just figured you know? we'd get out in front of it just yeah. in case it knew. But. Send you like a separate email. It's like, but FYI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Pretty Chat, fun little tool. ChatGPT, say... Um, should should men have better accommodations at a hospital when women give birth? Let's see what ChatGPT says. I don't know if it's an advice thing. Hospital. Um, hmm. Wow. I'm just no. I'm asking ChatGPT. Women are giving uh, no no autocorrect on ChatGPT. You're gonna have to go in and. All right. Should men have better accommodations at a hospital while women are giving birth? Dang it. As a language model AI, I don't have opinions. Uh, However, it is important to ensure that both men and women have equal access to adequate and comfortable accommodations in a hospital. Yes, <laughs> it sure is. While women are giving birth, they may require additional support and facilities, such as a private room or specialized equipment. Sure. But the same should be made available for the partners and family members who are accompanying them. A comfortable and supportive environment is essential for both the expectant mother and her support system during the birth process. 
Wow, they're even being PC. They're not even saying man. They're like, hey, support system? Whoever's there? I mean, I do, like, from a more logistical standpoint of, yeah, I would like for you to be able to sleep because I might not be. And so, I mean, one of us should be functioning. There's so. zero effort put in to the guys. And I'm excited don't to explain, this. but yeah, the, the, you'll see. Like, did you never even, did you, you knew not to even try to ask any nurse or anything like you had a pillow or. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, nurses are awesome for the, the mother. Mm. They, uh, they, they don't like, care too much for. Yeah. That's like, why I put the, it on your the list. Guy in the corner. So I put it on your list. <laughs> I've heard these things. Right. That's funny. I'm mm-hmm. excited to experience this. For it, for, for it to like not revolve around you and me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be such a fresh air. It'll be really air. different for you, I know. No, I yeah. think it, I'm <laughs> sure it'll be truly hilarious how much I am I cease to matter at all <laughs> yeah. in those like, few days. And it'll then the baby's here, and then it's like you, you, you go from like second to then third. So it's... Oh my gosh. Yeah. For the rest of time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And according to who? Uh, me. <laughs> Trey, I'm sure you're probably wondering, like, hey, when the baby's finally here, maybe I, I should have, like, a big announcement. Maybe a nice, fun tweet. Don't worry. I got you covered. Mm. Chat GPT, I said, write a funny tweet about my wife, Katie, giving birth. So you can just go ahead and copy, paste this yeah, one in. email it to me. This one doesn't make quite as much sense as some of the other stuff. Just when does my wife, Katie, give birth? And I've never seen one, and I've never seen someone yell, push, push, push the button on the remote. Hashtag dad life. <laughs> That's the tweet. There's yeah, something there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost like, huh. oh, I thought it was gonna be funnier, There's, but you see what huh. you see what he was trying to do. <laughs> yeah. He just needs to he needs to workshop that a little. Yeah. My wife Katie of Earth. I've never seen someone yell push, push, Remember, push the button. When we're in the throw of it, I might throw that joke out there. <laughs> push the button on the remote. The Chiefs are in the Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, remember that podcast. I don't really think is a pillow. Will be laughing. <laughs> So that's fun. I'll go. Ahead. I, I am excited to be because you get the comedian vibes. It's very funny to make jokes at inappropriate times. Oh, yeah. Probably my favorite. So I'm excited to be in certain area because something people don't realize, even on this podcast, I remember what I made fun of Katie, like puking. Some of the comments were like, I hope he even I hope he shows people, an ounce of yeah, compassion behind closed you. doors. Yeah. Like, no, actually. Yeah. When she's puking, I'm actively making fun of her. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, so because Katie yeah. takes a joke like a champ, she loves it. So I'm it's very fun. I'll even do this amongst friends where I'll make fun of Katie or even vice versa. She'll give back to me. And you could tell people maybe newly around us will be like, oh, my, what are these people saying to each other? Whoa, this is not. And so I'm excited to be in that room and probably say some funny joke and have nurses like nearly like have the police escort me out. Pull you aside. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me. Yeah, this is not OK. <laughs> She's right there. She's laughing. She's fine. Mm. May or may not be laughing, but what I read at the situation. Yeah, mm-hmm. read the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, read nine, the room. Nine, 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 nine times out of a hundred, you're down for a good joke. Yeah, but there's times where I'll make one and she, and her tears and eyes will just well up. Yeah, <laughs> like not today. <laughs> I love the comedians making jokes at the worst times because we've talked about this comedian we like, Sam Morrell, Morrell, uh-huh. and he goes on the day of his shows. He'll go on like morning like talk shows or like. Um, local news stations and just not have a care in the world. And I feel mm. like he's just there to just get a clip for Instagram. And I feel like we should start doing that. It's we should. so funny. Like he was like, he was doing a zoom call with like a local news station and he was just like, so this is my tour bus. Uh, hope you guys think it's cool. And he had his opener kind of like fake, just like kind of asleep. And, uh, he's like, Oh, this is my opener. Um, and like, Oh, is he asleep? And he's like, no, he overdosed. <laughs> and they were just like, Oh, wow. <laughs> on a news station? <laughs> yeah, just like on a live news station. He just loves catching people off guard. It is so funny. But yeah, so go follow him. He just, yeah. That's so why I listened to a podcast with Burt Kreischer, a very popular comedian. And he said, he told a story like at his kid's school, they were having oh, like a parent yeah. meeting and they were like, all right, at the school dance, we're going to really, we're just making sure everyone's comfortable with this. We really, he lives in LA, of course. And he's like, we really make sure people are comfortable. We want to have, we don't want to do this whole men and women or boys and girls dance together. We're going to make sure we have some girls and girls and some mm-hmm. boys and boys, and trans and then whatever it was. And he goes, Hey, listen, I don't care what gender my kids dance with as long as they're white. <laughs> and I guess his wife was like, he's kidding. He's, he's a kidding. comedian. He's a he's comedian. Joking. <laughs> you know, the room just looks at him like, what? <laughs> That's funny. 
It's I'm excited to do some parent teacher stuff. <laughs> Where Katie's got to be screaming. Yeah. He's a comedian. He's, he's a comedian. Yeah. yeah. Push the button on the remote. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Trey's spitting up now. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> they call me. Well, that chat GPT really yeah, got you. Just doing time. terrible jokes. They're like, yeah. they're actually not mad at you because you're offensive. It's you're like, you're, you're not funny. It's if it was just funny, not. it'd be fine. Yeah. It is funny as we navigate, like, yeah, we consider ourselves comedians. And I feel like anyone who, who regularly listens to this show sees us as comedians and, and listens to this podcast mm. in the from the viewpoint of us being comedians. But once we get outside of our audience, once we hit the algorithm, or once we even like make golf content, it's like people are like, hold on, buddy. Like, Whoa. Easy on the joke there. And that crossed the line. It is. I'm very grateful to be labeled comedian because it you do get a weird uh, leash when it's like, well, do you hear what he said? It's like, well, he's a comedian. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> oh. He says crazy stuff. That's cool. awesome. But it is a fine line. I'm, it's I kind of talk about it on my show a little bit because because in a normal life because sometimes there's times in normal life around real people I'm like well I don't always have to say crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. They're still normal human beings. Yeah, I don't need I need to be like hey do you guys just all get offended? Well I'm a comedian and they still look at me like can you we'll still screw you. <laughs> <laughs> like oh okay it doesn't work. Okay tone it down a little bit. Got it. Oh no I think we do a good job from all the comedians that we interact with. We're obviously clean comedians so I mean we're not. Yeah. Going around saying crazy stuff. But. And if like so many people that we've worked with just can't turn it off. Obviously, mm -hmm. we were very capable of just being normal. We can talk football. We can talk life and family. True. And some guys, every time, I mean, I know you know who I'm thinking of too. Like every time they come into the green room, like, hey guys, how's it going? I was out there talking to uh, one of the waitresses and I say to her, hey, that's not all for you, is it? And we're, we're laughing, we're laughing. You know, you're like, oh my God. Like, I just asked you where you're from. Right? <laughs> yeah. Did we talk like normal humans for a second? Yeah, they so. don't know how. Yeah, they've been really their can't. defense mechanism for their whole lives. You've, you've just made me a better person, mm -hmm. Katie. Yeah, let's doctor fill them. I like to do that. With their doctor yeah, Phil Phil is coming to license. an end. <laughs> doctor Phil is coming to an end. So yeah. I think Loki Katie they're... hasn't spoken in thirty minutes. I think. <laughs> <laughs> kind of forgot I about am <laughs> Really tired today. <laughs> I really She's did full not term, sleep, folks. I did not sleep that much. Yeah, at the time we're recording this, one, it's Groundhog Day. Happy Groundhog Day. Oh, everyone. did he see a shadow? For those celebrating. That's what I was going to talk about on the podcast is the Groundhog Day. <laughs> he saw your big old belly. And, like, <laughs> All I see is this. Uh, I have no idea. I don't care, and I probably never will. I'm going to say six kid. more weeks of pregnant. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> wait, how? what is his, um, what's his name? Puxatani Phil. Dr. Phil. Phil, what is his um, percentage of like being correct when he sees his shadow and when he? Let me ask a little yeah, AI let's, bot let's that. that I know. Yes, we'll get right back to you. And you said um, Dr. Phil's ending? <laughs> I did see a little um, clip yeah. on that. Yeah. So I feel like this is maybe my calling. You could do it, Dr. Katie. Yeah. How would you handle the Catch Me Outside girl? So I'll, I'll be her and you be Dr. Katie. Okay. Dang, girl, you looking big as... <laughs> Shoot, I don't care. I don't care. All them booing. I don't give up. Meet me outside. <laughs> I don't give a crap. I am pregnant, so I'm not going to take offense to that, but usually it's not great to Whatever. say those things to people. Shoot, I say what I want to say. Okay. Anybody stop me from saying what I want to say? <laughs> well, that's. I'm really happy for you. What else do you have to say? <laughs> I've, I've, never felt, I've never felt like I've been truly loved. Come here, I'll give Psych. you a hug. Your hair is dusty. <laughs> All you hoes laughing like something funny. <laughs> so what? Can I go? You want to go get a drink? What? Let's, go, let's go hang out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's your call? And you know that Rachel is in uh, master's classes and is doing like practicum, different stuff. But she's in a class for uh, counseling, mental health coaching, yada yada. And she had to sit in. She was kind of the proctor of this of these two students. One was pretending to be the, the client. One was pretending to be the counselor. And you know, the client is having to kind of make up different scenarios. Things are going through, and they were, I guess, they were trying to talk about you know maybe some issues they have and to try and prop up the fake counselor into helping them out. They were talking about some negative coping things they're doing. Like, yeah, I've just been pretty sad. So I, uh, I might have to get a drink after this. And I guess the student pretending to be the counselor said what you say. He's like, I might have to join you. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel was like, my jaw just dropped. 
on camera. You talk about the worst thing to say. Like, you know what? Drinking to solve your problems. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. Let's do yeah. more of that. I That's know funny. that you're in high school, but. <laughs> I mean, that Rachel was so just funny. like, he did such a good job. Like the whole, it wasn't like he was bad at his job, but something just snapped. He was just a little too personal. Just like, you're sad. You want to drink about it? <laughs> Been there. <laughs> Preaching to the hey, choir. Listen, I'm a human too, right? What do you say? You want to head to the casino after this? And so that Rachel had to like give feedback. She was the like the whatever for that round. And she's like, okay, so I thought some of it was good. And if there's anything to work on, maybe don't offer to meet your client for a drink under any circumstance, especially when they say, I'm feeling sad. Like, don't encourage <laughs> right. them to drink. You, yeah. <laughs> Just you kind of encourage them to cope with alcohol. <laughs> so just maybe don't. She's like so nice. Maybe don't do that. But I'm not. Look, I'm a student too. I'm so student I could too. be. We're all learning. I could be remembering the textbook wrong. You know, <laughs> what you did is like maybe you're like training to be like a neurosurgeon, and you were like, <laughs> "Hey, let's cut off one of my hands." <laughs> maybe don't do that. That's great, man. What uh, so nice. what ChatGPT tell us? So once again, it gave us the, I'm a language model AI. I don't have access. But typically, <laughs> I wow. love that it does this. A lot of this. A lot of covering its, its tracks. It's like, I don't give predictions. I can't be legally. Uh... But the men do need equal rights. It says, but the typical accuracy rate of the Groundhog's prediction on a Groundhog Day is about 39%. That's pretty low. <laughs> that sucks. What a terrible folk tradition. Yeah, wow. And, and You think it'd be way closer. That's not very good. Yeah, How 50. long... Um, has this groundhog been alive? Centuries. Think, yeah, mm -hmm. he just is. He's never, never died. Yeah, I think when he was younger, he was up like 70, 80 percent. As yeah. he gets older, I mean, he didn't know what a shadow looks like. Yeah, yeah. it's hard to see. We got to retire. Yeah. Him. It's, it's like a Tom Brady of ferrets. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, what's up with that? He retired three months after they signed their divorce papers. What do you What do you mean? What's up? What's up with that? With the way you said, what's up with that? I mean, they got a divorce because he. Would it wouldn't prioritize his family, right? I mean, I don't know if we know exactly why they got it. I don't divorce, know. Do we? That seems pretty accurate. <laughs> I mean, we don't know them at all. <laughs> <laughs> We've never met them. That's how I feel about him. And screw him. Um, yeah. yeah. So it was a weird. That was, it was a master class in like retire when you're on top. He could have gone out a Super Bowl champ, mm -hmm. and he's like one more year, and just had like a okay year and blew up his family. Yeah. Well, this is a little less exciting now. Same I thing didn't happen to Bill Gates. <laughs> Bill Gates. Yeah. Could have retired on top. Got divorced. Mm. Divorce, man. Oh. Wow. I did what? at least respect the way he did it. He was like, look, I'm just going to get right to it. I am retiring. And I'm not going to do a whole good. thing. He's like, I did that last year. You only get one just emotional video. He just retirement. broke it himself on Twitter. Twitter video. That was the way to do it. Hmm. And I kind of yeah. like he was just chilling on a beach somewhere. Yeah. I was like, were other people around? Like, they were probably just walking by. At Tom Brady's announcing his retirement. They didn't even know. He bought all of Tampa, actually. So, <laughs> it's his beach. That's cool. Yep. He uh, and he posted another clip of him. And then at the end of the video, he kisses his son for like a long time. Yeah. Oh, those are just. But he not... said, he's like, I'm going to retire from kissing my son this long. So it was like, this is like my last hurrah. So he's like, so here we go. Now that my son is 16. He did post a little clip recently of like his son like on his lap like by the pool yeah just asking for it yeah like stop i guess, I mean, I guess that's better than the other extreme of completely ignoring him but <laughs> yeah they seem pretty close so maybe <laughs> yeah. it isn't family issues maybe not maybe not maybe it's the wife hmm, maybe maybe she blew up the family maybe. what's up with that what's up with maybe. that i mean hmm? yeah who knows could you ask could you ask a uh, chat gpt already on it um, at what age should you stop smooching your son? Okay. Just because, you know, I'm obviously about to have a son. And is there, you, you want to make sure take push two. the I limits? I'm interested to see how much I want to kiss my son on the lips. Okay. <laughs> because I see, because some parents do it until they're 12. Yeah. Some do it until they're four. Some don't do it at all. How old were I, you? Not, huh? How old were you when you stopped kissing? Our, our first kiss or our last your parents. I'll never forget the first <laughs> with dad. Ew. <laughs> See, it's weird, but I've always been more of the mind of like, I don't, I don't, I don't have a kid yet. I'll keep y'all posted. But yeah. I feel like it's impossible to know because I don't have the kid yet. But I don't see, I just see the mouth to mouth kissing. I don't know if I have a strong desire to do that. Big kisses on the cheek. 
oh, the forehead, gimme, gimme, gimme. <laughs> I don't know. Not judging. I'm, I'm a we'll Tom see. Brady fan. I guess we'll until see. he's 11. I've seen grown men kiss each other, related and unrelated. I'll, hey, how much farther should I go? <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> I think that's good. What does Chad I've GPT seen say? <laughs> grown men and a donkey. I've seen grown men and a horse, couple of ducks I've watching. Little I've people seen. and big people. <laughs> Um, chat GPT is giving us the runaround again, just, you know, dancing around the topic. They said there's no specific time limit for how long a dad can kiss his son on the lips. However, it, it's funny that, we <laughs> however, <laughs> super weird. <laughs> it's just, what if it just breaks character? However, however you're tripping if you do it. Pretty past sus. Past, yeah. Why past are you Googling break. this? <laughs> I love that know. Like, we have access to this like once in a lifetime, like cutting edge technology. And this is the stuff we're using it on. Oh, it's like, fun. Okay. However. It's important for parents to be mindful of the cultural and social norms in their community. That's a great piece of advice for it just is. anything mm-hmm. at any time. Yeah. For anyone. Ask, should, should, um, let's ask it this. Should white and black people be equal? Should, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> it is, uh, I also What if we find a glitch in the system? Like, uh, I'm all people should be equal. However, <laughs> based on my research. I asked it why Tom Brady got a divorce, just in case it knew something we didn't. Oh. Um, Tom Brady and his wife, Giselle, got a divorce because of their personal differences and the difficulty of maintaining a long-distance relationship. Long distance. Mm. Nothing about football. I mean, I will say your marriage is probably not great if you can't, you know... Be in the same room. Do (laughs) some sort of long distance for a short period of time. Oh. It's not ideal, obviously, but... That's People are deployed and spend right. a year over. I'm going to ask ChatGPT, why does Katie hate Tom Brady? <laughs> see what it says. And then see if it, something went wrong. Please try reloading the conversation. <laughs> Thanks. That's how much she hates him? I guess so. Can, can I make fun of my pregnant wife throwing up? Let's end with that one. Great. Because a lot of recties disagree with that. And I just want to, I just want to confirm. While it's um, doing that, I... Got some like little food bug, stomach bug a couple days ago. And unfortunately, I had to think about you guys while I was throwing up. I'm like mid throw up. And I'm like, this is just like the clip. <laughs> we just pushed it. Am I more true? Am I more Katie? Are you a yeller? Or a- um, I don't know what I was. It was like I was having trouble getting stuff up. So it was a lot of just like empty dry heaving. Oh. And it's just miserable, dude. That's the worst. Just miserable. I don't want to keep making this podcast about throwing up. But I did just experience it. It sucked, dude. Um. I'm having to reword this. It's not working. Can I make fun of my pregnant wife while she is Can I throwing make up? Fun of, yeah. Can I make fun of my pregnant wife while she is throwing up? Maybe I do vomiting. Is this too much slang? While she is vomiting. Yeah, that's what I. That's the uh, scientific term. Up, Can I up chucking? Maybe. What if I say? Can I tease? Can I make fun of? Maybe it's too much. Can I tease my pregnant wife while she is vomiting? <laughs> It, no, it's not working. Hold on, let me. <laughs> What's it say? Just, it, it just something went wrong. All it's right. like, all right. Chad we've GPT. scoured the internet and nothing close. Did to Did you this. guys use hey, Ask Jeeves when you were younger? Use what? Ask Jeeves. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was the original Chat GPT. It was. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, here we go. Oh, you remember Cha Cha? That was also two four two two four two. Ooh, oh, yes, yes. yes. That. Cha Cha, that was wild. All right, we got an answer. No. It is not appropriate to tease or make jokes about someone who's feeling sick, especially if they are pregnant. Pregnancy can bring a range of physical and emotional changes, and your wife may be feeling vulnerable and sensitive during this time. Instead, offer her support, comfort, and understanding, and be there for her in a caring and a compassionate way. Boom, you just got gpt I mean, <laughs> if anyone is having any relationship issues, just ask gpt GPT, and they, I mean... He, she, it will really help your marriage out. Wow. Oh, okay, so that's settled. I, I I no longer can make fun of you when you're feeling ill because you're vulnerable. Is that? Is I that guess it? so. I mean, that is. Wow. You know, it, the Chat GPT specifically says, and if if he if it doesn't have you know true facts, and that's mm. a fact. It only okay. spits out truth. So next time you're puking, I I'll just put like headphones in. Um, you know, I guess if you're still like, you know, taking care of me, sure. 
Okay, there it is. I apologize to all the rectees. I mean, chat GPT. I just got GPT. You got GPT. I mean, at least Wait, we got to the bottom of it. Is this the first time you've gotten like really sick and have had Rachel like in your life? Did she like take care of you? Uh, I, I think she kind of offered, but I um, I think we talked about. It. I had to put my money where my mouth is. I don't I don't need to be baby too much. I just handled it on my own. You know, we're not living together or anything. So yeah, yeah. I just uh, just you know, kind of got on my hands and knees, opened up the governor, and just had at mm. it. You know, just me in the toilet. Old school. Yeah, it was. My roommates were getting a kick out of it because, you know, when you know you're going to throw up, it's like I'm trying to distract myself. I'm trying oh, to yeah. care about this college basketball game I truly care nothing about. And I go into my room. I'm like, boys, I think it's time. I go into my room and I'm wearing like a hoodie, a coat, some sweatpants. I come out 15 minutes later and I'm wearing only boxers and I'm flexing. I'm mm. like, who, who, who took care of business in yeah. there, baby? Yeah. <laughs> they were dying. That is not how I come out of those scenarios. Well, you know, when you like you, you get done... <laughs> You feel amazing for like 15 minutes and it's like, dang it, I burped again. It's that same feeling. I'm not done with this. But for a split second, you feel amazing. Totally. All right. One last thing. So chat GPT, it's built to be truly a chat. Like you can ask it a question and then follow up that question. Like oh. now make it sound more funny or whatever. So I followed up with its answer. I said, what if she's being really loud and loves when I tease her? Even if your wife enjoys being teased, it's important to be considerate and understanding of her current physical state. Pregnancy can be difficult and uncomfortable, but so can being nauseous and vomiting. It is best to wait until she is feeling better before engaging in playful teasing. Mm, well, ask it one more. Ask it one more follow-up. Yeah, yeah. This is amazing. Um, um, we should keep in mind the puking <laughs> makes the husband very uncomfortable. Does that make a difference? <laughs> Let's ask it that. Let's so, ask it that. All right. We should keep in mind... <laughs> The vomiting is is annoying to the husband. <laughs> annoying. <laughs> does does that make a difference? I think this will be. I think we get to bottom this, Katie. It's my love for you. I'm glad that asking an AI generator. So yeah. does that change things? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so does that? <laughs> does that be? Does it make a does difference? Does that move the needle at all? Cute little bot. This is so funny to me. It's just like, yeah, using all this technology for this type of conversation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like other people are writing marketing copy with this yeah. and, you know, writing YouTube subscriptions. Um, all right, here it goes. So the question was, I said, we should keep in mind the vomiting makes the husband very uncomfortable and nauseous. Does that make a difference? And it is, it is going to town. Yes. In this case, <laughs> oh, thank you. it is important to consider both partners' well-being and comfort. If teasing your wife during her vomiting... Oh, wait, it kind of misunderstood. Okay, if teasing your wife during her vomiting makes you feel nauseous, uncomfortable, it is best to avoid it. So if you get <laughs> too teasy. So well, I think what it's saying is do, do what makes you more comfortable. So mm -hmm. me making fun of her really alleviates my nausea. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, wow, in a roundabout way, I was being a good husband. <laughs> it says ultimately the goal is to create a safe and supportive environment for both partners. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> All right. I'm glad we got to the bottom of this. Chad GPT is the fourth member of this podcast now. All right. <laughs> Next time you got a fire hydrogen out of your mouth, I'll be there. Hey, Rectis. I'll have jokes ready. Send in some questions for Chad GPT. We know the best way to word it. <laughs> She's so tired. Like <laughs> I can. I am so tired. <laughs> I am <laughs> really no, struggling. Okay. Our hope, we hope there's no more puking. Thank you all for listening to this. Um, Fun random episode from we don't know when it's going live. When this goes listening. live, I will also be really tired and mm -hmm. probably even more tired. So and I I'm not going to make fun of you. Yeah, I and will. We'll let you guys know. Love you guys. Thanks for all the love. I'm sure you're sending our way and we'll talk to you next week. Peace. Correct opinion.